Hey there, so today I wanted to record for you a presentation I was lucky enough to be able to give to a local company yesterday about working from home and adjusting to the new normal. Now, at the start of lockdown, I did a similar thing for folks uh, as we were kind of adjusting to that, uh, that change or that transition from uh, working in the office to working from home. And I think maybe all of us thought at that time that would be like a temporary thing, we'd all go back to the office and stuff like that. But what's become clear, I think now, is that there is this new normal. Like, I've been waiting for things to go back to normal for a while, like probably many of you, but we've got to acknowledge and there's that realization that they're probably not. And this way we're gonna live is the way we're gonna live probably, you know, definitely for the next few years, maybe forever. So I wanted to do a presentation to help folks who are struggling to find balance, create routine and structure in this kind of new environment, the new normal, shall we call it. So what I'm gonna do for you on this video is just go through that. It's a longer form video, right? So, you know, I would say, I would encourage you if you can to kind of just put this on audio, walk around, move around while you listen and uh, take what is uh, meaningful to you from it. I'm gonna give you a load of information in this, all the information that you need to kind of uh, make a success and build structure working from home. Um, and we're going to talk about things like exercise, nutrition as well. So there's quite a lot of stuff we're going to get into on this. Uh, and after having gone through the call, I really wanted to uh, make the most of kind of the work I put in and the feedback I got from it and record that and distribute that to all of you guys. So first thing, I'm going to start as I did in the call, because uh, you might be watching this, listening to this and have no idea who I am. So I'll explain everything about me, who I am, where I am in life, uh, what we'll go through and then we'll go from there. So first of all, about me. My name's Glenn Oliver, um, 41, knocking on the door, 42 years old. Uh, I'm a dad, I'm a business owner. And probably like many of you listening to this, I'm struggling to find a way to balance all the competing demands I have in my life uh, and to find the time to still work on me and uh, look after my health and fitness and uh, mental well-being too. So that's where I'm at. I'm a coach, I help people individually, both in the context of uh, exercise, nutrition, and uh, lifestyle, habit-based coaching, and I own a facility here in Crawley called Route One Fitness. We've been open nearly nine years now. We've had a big journey ourselves as a gym and a business and have changed and grown and evolved over the years. Um, and But that's my passion, that's what I love doing. Uh, prior to this, I had a really different career. Uh, don't judge me, but I was a police officer for nearly 30, well, over 13 years. Um, made the change about 10 years ago. I've always loved helping people, coaching and development, and always loved fitness and kind of found my niche really through what I do now. So lucky enough to say that I think what I'm doing is what I should be doing and it gives me energy and I'm excited to do it every day and to talk about these things. Um, in the last couple of years, I've definitely grown on, grown on my own journey as a coach as I've evolved through COVID to understand that what matters most to po most people in coaching is not the detail and minutia of things like exercise design, it's on conversations on things that are happening outside of the gym, such as purpose, meaning, you know, the intrinsic motivation towards why we want to do things like exercise or improve our body shape and body composition and stuff like that. Um, and especially through COVID, what I've recognized is that the best support oftentimes you could offer someone as a coach is the ability to just listen and to just reflect back, back the only person's thoughts onto them and just have conversations. So that's really my style of coaching. I'm not someone who's, uh, you know, like a military drill sergeant or anything like that. I'm very much holistic and about working with the whole person and really asking the bigger questions about what they want to do. So here we go. So. What we're going to do today is talk about what I see is the main issues with this kind of like new normal way of working and how have I got to this conclusion? Well, this is through coaching a lot of people, 50, 50 plus people through COVID and in the current situation now. Um, so this isn't just like stuff I'm pulling out of the air, it's things that I'm seeing day to day from having conversations with people like you who are struggling in these situations. So. Um, so here's the main things that I, I've kind of come across from talking to folks and dealing with, uh, dealing with clients in this, this kind of new era. We lack structure and routine. Um, and what I want to talk today about today is why that's important and how we can start to implement it when we're working from home. It's hard to balance work and rest. This is one of the big ones for me that I see with co folks working from home is there's no clear delineation between the two 
and why that's important and how you can start to implement that now. We don't move much on a stuck all day. I think a lot of us have put on a bit of lockdown weight, that's still hanging around and we're finding that we're more sedentary, i.e. we're sitting around way more than we did before. So how can we incorporate movement day to day? How can we start to exercise? What should that look like for us now? We're working from home more. And lastly, in the nutrition kind of piece, the diet piece, it seems like it's way easier for a lot of people to make poor choices when they're at home, whether that's be based on habit, energy levels, access to these kind of foods. So we want to talk about that today. And like I said, I'm going to give you everything. There's going to get a lot of information here. And what I'd encourage you to do if you're listening to this is to take notes and to action the things that really stand out to you. There's going to be a lot of things you could do from this call, but action the things that you feel are going to give you the biggest possible impact with the minimal, most minimal amount of work, okay? Don't try and do everything at once because it's not going to work, okay? So, firstly, let me take a drink. Why we need structure. So, I'm a big fan of a guy called Jocko Willink, and you may not have heard of him, but he's this crazy Navy SEAL guy, been on Joe Rogan a few times, um, super disciplined bloke, and his basic kind of mantra or kind of tagline is that discipline equals freedom uh, and I really believe in this I believe that we are defined by the, our habits and our habits equals discipline and our habits can either set us up for success or failure and that's why we need to create habits structure in day-to-day life to make sure we can be the best uh, version of ourselves possible and that's cliche but there's you know different roles you're going to perform and I don't want you to just be good at your job I want you to be a great partner a great parent a great friend you know a great son or daughter all those things I think it's really important that structure exists in your life to help you and enable you to fulfill all those roles adequately and in balance we're designed to work in rhythm and balance so for example we're designed to sleep with the moon and wake with the sun but obviously many of us now because of artificial lighting we'll uh, kind of s- stay awake later in the night, sleep less, all those kind of things. But we're designed to be in rhythm throughout the day. We have these natural energy peaks and troughs, which we should honor. And if we want to kind of optimize the way we work, we should try and listen to these and try and find a way to move forward where we work based around those energy peaks and troughs. So working from home really for us removes that structure. And I think the analogy I kind of use, uh, this is my own experience in life, is like, I feel like working from home is where you go from being at high school to college. So what I found in that transition as a a kid was high school, right, you had to turn up. If you didn't turn up, you got in trouble, they called your parents, they asked where you were, so on and so forth. And then you go to college and no one cares if you don't turn up. They don't call your parents, you go and crack on. And the trouble is with me as a 16 year old kid, I just went off. I used to go around charity shops buying records because that's what I was into. I didn't care about college. But the problem was they didn't have that discipline, I didn't have that structure, so I didn't stick to it, which was definitely an issue for me. But anyway, that's another story. But that's, I think, the situation a lot of us are in now, is that um, there's no structure for us. And I think we kind of need that. Um, But equally, there is something beautiful about the freedom a lot of us have now, because it enables us to really create our own days and really uh, helps us to um, balance all those things out if we can take these steps. So what, what are the things that I suggest you should do? Right, so first of all, I'd say look at when you're most alert. We all have different times throughout the day when we're most alert and least alert. So for me, example, I'm great in the morning. Right? I'm bang on in the morning, ready to go. My most productive hours are probably before 10 a.m., like really great. And then as I go on throughout the day, that will drop off. Four in the afternoon, I'm not really good for anything other than a few emails, okay? so. What I would say is, you know, take a, take a look at that and log it, okay? Just take a note, right? It doesn't have to be anything complex. Write it down on a bit of paper, how you feel hour on hour, when you feel like you're most good to go. And then what you need to do is change and try and um, manipulate your schedule to reflect those things. Um, when you alert, alert, do your hardest work. When you aren't alert, do the, the stuff that requires the least brain power, so, so replying to emails, admin, stuff like that. I think a lot of people, the mistake they make is they load those... Um, admin based tasks on the front end of the day when they're more alert and you're like don't do that now that's when you need your brain right so we're all in this kind of like brain economy now even me as a coach like a lot of it is physical instruction but it's still like business program design all those kind of things so I load those tasks like program design 
uh, the business stuff on the front end of the day when I know I'm going to be best and then emails I'll deal with on the back end of the day when I know it's just kind of a simple kind of there's not much I have to think about in those things so that's what I'd encourage you to do another great technique which uh, I've had a lot of clients use with success is something called the Pomodoro technique so the Pomodoro technique is basically working in 90 minute blocks okay so you have a 90 minute block of work then you have like a 30 minute rest but each one of those 90 minute blocks is broken down further into a period of 25 and five minutes rest. So 25 minutes work, five minutes rest. Do that times three, take a rest of 30 minutes and then go again. What this is good for is keeping you really focused. You've got 25 minutes of focused work, five minutes rest. And it means you stay away from that kind of uh, burnout or um, fatigue point where you just like can't think, need to kind of have some energy and what that generally is, and it is for me, like, I hold my hands up to this. If I get in this place, it'll be a chocolate bar, it'll be a fizzy drink, it'll be something full of sugar to just, bang, give me some energy. So this helps you to stay away from that, which, which then in turn is obviously making you make better decisions around your food because you're not giving into that impulse of just needing energy. Um, and lastly, something that uh, I'm sure many of you have heard of is time blocking, which is something which I can think can be really powerful, especially in this kind of, phase of trying to create structure. So what time blocking looks like is planning out your day to day based around when you're going to do the tasks that you need to do to get your work done. Uh, and I know for many of us, the to do list is always growing and stuff like that. But I think it really helps me to remove the anxiety around getting that work done. If I can look at my schedule over the week and go, right, well, that's when I'm going to do that. That's when I'm going to do that. And there's always going to be this space for like the, the oh shit moment where I didn't anticipate something has come up. So that's one thing to, to put in if you're going to do that. And when you do time blocking, I would say like, you know, it's all written in pencil or probably on your Google calendar so you can change it straight away. Get a feel for this and then just work through it over time. And um, you should be able to build some pretty solid routine and structure around your day to day life. So balance work and rest. This is a probably the biggest one for me on all the points we're going to talk about today and I think it's something that's become so lost in this working from home kind of lifestyle um, there's no delineation between the work you and the home you and I don't know about you but I have different modes like how I am at work is different from how I am at home like I'm a highly introverted person but at work I'm you know more of an extrovert because that's my role that's what I have to perform so the problem is with that that there's no kind of like uh, preparation and decompression time. So if you're going from sitting in your lounge, having your breakfast, to up in the office, bang, straight on like a, a stressful call, and then at the end of the day, equally, you finish that stressful call and you go straight downstairs and see your family, there's no chance for you to pair, prepare mentally at the front end and decompress on the back end. So really simple on this is to kind of add that commute back into your life. I think a lot of us, um, me especially, like, you know, having having commuted for years in my old job, that that commute was a chance for me to really prepare for what I was gonna go and do and really to decompress from all the stuff I used to see day to day. And this is when I was reading the police. I used to commute up to London then back. And that decompression time was a massive mental thing for me. So I could get home and feel like, right, that's done. Let's get on with the evening. So we haven't got that now. So how do you do this? Go for a walk. Okay, that's the easiest easiest thing I can say. It doesn't have to be thirty minutes. It could be it probably best if it's something like five minutes because if it's 30 minutes there's realistically a chance you probably won't do it so over the next week try and add this into your day and the bonus with that is you're going to get more sun exposure more movement which is more exercise um honor your working hours i don't give a shit about your company culture or what the expectation is and anything like that i only care about you as a person listening to this and if you have a company culture that has this kind of subliminal undertone of expectation that you work longer than your working hours, that's not healthy, that's not good for you, and you're gonna burn out. And what you need to understand is ultimately, if they cared for you, there would not be that expectation, okay? So you need to honor your working hours, all right? And I know that's easy for me to say, and sitting in my ivory tower, the fitness coach saying this, but this is truth in it. I see so many people burning out, so many. And it's all because of this same thing. There's an expectation that they have to do more, 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 and then they get sick. And I don't want that for you. I don't know you, maybe I do, but I definitely don't want you to get sick, okay? So honor your working hours. Um, we are in this kind of thinking economy now, which I said. So your brain is the biggest tool 
you have day to day to get your work done. We're not in factories anymore making things. Some of us are, but you know, very few of us are. Um, so your brain needs to rest, and that's why you need to have that time off. If you don't, and you're like just burning the candle at both ends, the analogy I use is like having your foot on the accelerator and the brake at the same time and just trying to keep going like that. You can't do it. So you need to rest. Your brain needs to rest. How does that rest? Well, it rests when you're not thinking about work, you're not doing work. It rests when you're spending time with your family, when you're having conversations, when you're enjoying life, when you're doing exercise, and when you're sleeping as well. Sleep's a big thing for your brain. That's why we need enough of it to kind of get recovered for the next day. A good tip here is to think about filling your diary with non-negotiable things that you have to do at certain times after you finish work. That could be fitness, sports, family activities, but generally things that are tied in to relationships with other people so you're accountable to them and you, you don't want to let them down, right? If, if you're just going to go to a big globo gym by yourself, you're planning on doing that this evening, but no one's going to know except for you, realistically, there's a good chance that you may not go. If st things get stressful at work, it's really easy to kind of sacrifice that because you're like, oh, I'm not letting anyone down. I'll do that next week. I'll do that, do that next month. I'll start that. So create moments in your diary, create appointments that anchor to things you enjoy doing and things that involve other people in your life. There will always be more to do. I touched upon this before, and I know that as a business owner, I'm sure you know that. The demands that are put on us now are not going away. So this way of working, this kind of uh, understanding or evolution to accept the fact that there were always gonna have more and more and more to do, needs you to have a shift in your mindset away from this kind of like list completion. And for me, that's taken me a long time. It's like I have quite bad OCD about these kind of things, and task completion is a big thing for me. Now I just have to accept you leave things on the table every day and it's just the choice you make about which things you leave on the table. I have a goal of doing one thing every day, one big task, and that's it. That's the only expectation I have day to day and that really helps me mentally feel like I've made a success of the day. And today, do you know what that is? It's doing this video. So once I've done this, I'm good to go. Anything else is the gravy, as they say. So, schedule lunches. Not controversial, you should be having a lunch break. Your brain cannot work for eight, nine, ten hours a day solid without a bit of a break. And that lunch should not be at your desk. If you're sitting at your desk right now watching this, maybe that's an exception, okay? But what that lunch should look like if you're working from home is out of the office, in the kitchen, or even better, if you've got outside space, get outside, have your lunch outside, especially this time of year when the weather's better, get that sun on your skin, okay? And if you even want to upgrade that even more, have your lunch, go for another little five, 10 minute walk. This is all about building habits. All of this is about habits, okay? As I said at the start, your habits define you. And so I know this can seem daunting and there's a lot of stuff here. So really start with the, the, with the thing that resonates most with you and the thing you can start to do now with the minimal, most minimum amount of effort. If it's gonna take you more than five minutes to do, probably don't do it, okay? So start with a walk before and after work and then throw in the lunch one as well, okay? Um, how to move more to look good and feel good. Right, this is a big one. So we've already discussed this. Look for any opportunities in the day to move, okay? The walk at pre, post and lunch is the best place to start. A lot of us are spending our time still on these kind of Zoom team meetings. If you can in any way do them walking, do it. And I don't want you to shy away from creating expectations from the person you're doing that with, that's what you're gonna do. And I don't want you to feel bad for it, unless you've got specifically look at data on a screen, go and go for a walk. And tell the person you're with that you're gonna do it and try and get them to do it too. There's actually a kind of a lot of um, uh, psychological benefits for both of you going on a walk together and apart. It's supposed to really help the flow of a meeting because you're kind of on this journey together. So it sounds really wooey, and it is, but hey, that's life, right, that's me. So. Next time, or as much as you can in your schedule, those meetings, put the headphones on, connect to your phone, and get outside and go for a walk. Working out at home, for most of us, sucks, okay? I hated it, I can't do it, I need to be in a gym, um, and for most of us, it's just not the right environment. Especially if you're working from home, living at home, working out from home, it's like we're all in this like little like bubble now and we're not going outside of it so what i would say to you is 
try and find a way to incorporate fitness in your life that gets you out the house and is fun for you. Um, I'm not dogmatic around what fitness should look like for you as a person or exercise should be. So I would encourage you to really think about like, you know, what, what kind of exercise or movement could I do that I would enjoy doing? Because there's a lot better chance you're going to stick with that and keep doing it. So for example, if you used to play sport in school and that's something you still interest you, why not do it now, okay? Play sport for the sake of playing it. Don't even have to play it to get better at it. Just do it to have fun and move, socialize and make some friendships, okay? Outside of work, outside of the house, I think that's really important. If you do want to go to a normal gym, look, I've got a bias here. I own a small group training gym and there are other really good group training gyms that are gonna create a real community tribe atmosphere, which are amazing because there's a sense of belonging there and a sense of community. You won't get a normal big, big box gym. So if you wanna to go to a normal gym, find a good group gym near you that's gonna take care of you. Isn't gonna throw you into a wall each day so you can't walk. Um, and really has a nice community atmosphere that's non-judgmental, non-intimidating, and it's something that you wanna keep coming back to. There's loads of them out there. Have a little look around. They all offer a trial. We offer, offer a trial. Go and have a little taste of it, and then find one that fits for you. Ultimately, this is a, you know, a shameless uh, plug for coaching. Like I think the ultimate accountability for things like exercise and building these habits is to hire a coach because you've got someone in your corner then to really triage where you are and help navigate that with you as kind of these bumps in the road occur. And we are designed to move, okay? We're designed to move. We're not designed to sit down all day. We're designed to move around. So just take that on board, okay? This way of living, this sedentary, seated position we spend 99% of our lives in super unhealthy for you for your health and for your productivity okay it's it's just not good for you so get up move more stay active and lastly and this is a big thing I'm sure you've probably heard this before um, self-care is not selfish it's part of making you the best version of you that you can possibly be if you want to be the best business person the best business owner the best parent the best partner all these things like exercising, moving your body, looking after yourself are critical. They're not, they're not things that should be compromised. They're like essential parts of day-to-day -day life. So, how to make better choices around food. And this could be a 50, 60 minute video in and of itself. But I'm gonna give you all the information you need here to actually know your nutrition. There's nothing else to it, all right? And what I'll say first of all, is none of this is fad-based bullshit because that's what you're going to see on your feed about taking this this shake, that pill, this fasting diet, whatever it is, okay? This is everything you need to make a success of your nutrition and we're going to talk about it now, okay? Food is not just fuel. I wish it was. It would be a lot easier and we'd all be super jacked. But food for most of us is tied into emotion, it's timed into location, it's timed into habit. Um, so... It's a really complex thing. It's not as simple as me saying, like, here's a meal plan for you. There's a lot to it. And really, I think if you can ask the questions around like, okay, if I'm having this food and I know I don't want it, what's the trigger behind me having it? And if you don't sort that trigger out, you're probably not gonna stop having that food. And what I'm getting at here is kind of the emotional eating, eating when you're tired, things like that. You need to kind of have that bigger picture look on it. Don't just beat yourself up for giving in to the biscuits and crisps, whatever it is, because there's a reason for it. Um, look at what you're doing now. That's the best thing I can say. How much of it is that habit, convenience side of it, and how much is it is it, um, is it actually really what you want to eat? And I find for a lot of us, we just aren't making uh, some simple decisions to make better choices in the moment, because it's based around convenience and it's based around habit. This sounds maybe really patronizing, but the most simple thing I can say is eat like an adult, okay? The less processed foods you can have, the most minimally processed few foods you can have are gonna be the ones that are better for you. If they go out of date within three to five days, that's what you should be eating most of the time. Um, if it lasts for like two years in the fridge, that's probably not actual real food, okay? So if you can move towards like a more whole food, um, complete, diet that's going to serve you better for health and longevity in the long term okay simple one here right is if there's a food in the house you're going to eat it inevitably right so if you've got that 
emergency bag of crisps, the chocolate drawer and stuff like that, that that's going to be there in your head when those times are tough, when you feel like crap and you're tired and you want some energy, that's going to be there. So what's the trick? Get rid of it. Give it away. Throw it away. That food is never going to support your goals. It may make you feel better in the moment and that's the great thing with junk food, like instantly soothes you, makes you feel better. But what happens once you've finished it? You feel like crap. And then half an hour later, you want more. So if you can remove that from your house, that's the, that's the easy win, right? Because it simply isn't there. If we're going to talk about how your meals should look, um, they're really simple, okay? Every meal should have a protein source, including breakfast. We generally have a very sugar, carby-based breakfast in this country, but add a protein source in. Limit uh, the amount of starchy carbs you have in a day, right? And limit the amount of uh, kind of the volume of them as well. Starchy carbs are things like breads, pasta, stuff like that. We have very bread, pasta, carby-based diet in this country. Just try and limit that and have more of a protein, veggie-based diet. Um, don't be afraid of fats. Fat is not fattening. What is fattening is the consumption of foods that create, that are just too much, too much energy, too many calories in them, right? I don't want to talk about calories too much because I think it's, uh, it can create a real problem for a lot of people. But just think of it as fat is not fattening. It's actually really healthy and essential for brain function. Um, but it's too much of anything that's going to be fattening, right? If you have six avocados a day, that's going to be fattening. If you have two, two loaves of bread a day, that's fattening too. There's no difference. Easy, simple win on, a di on lunches is to make a bigger dinner, right? I hate meal prep. I'm not the meal prep guy. That's not me. But if you're cooking one meal a day, just cook a bigger meal. Have that for your leftovers. It's not rocket science, okay? It doesn't have to be. If you don't want to eat breakfast, don't eat breakfast. You don't feel like you're compelled to. I certainly don't. But here's the thing. If you don't eat breakfast and then eat, eat like a fool at the end of the day because you haven't eaten enough, that's a problem. Then you might want to consider a breakfast, okay? Um, you shouldn't need snacks. You shouldn't. All right. If you're eating three full balanced meals throughout a day, snacks should really be something that are minimal and only kind of really like an, a once or twice a week thing. A lot of us spend a lot of time snacking and that's just because we're not eating enough of our meals. And lastly, here we go, diet culture. What you're gonna see and here is absolute bullshit. Nutritional principles are really what have been around for years. Right, we've, we've known what we, wanna, what we should be eating for years and years. Just understand that what you're seeing on, on your feeds is actually not gonna serve you for uh, longevity and for success long-term. It's gonna get you maybe to where you wanna go in four, eight, 12 weeks but then you'll yo-yo back up and be exactly where you were when you started and then you're, and then you're bothered, okay? So, dehydration, okay, big one here. That can often be mistaken for hunger, so make sure you drink enough water. Lots, lots of information here, I know that, and I wanna wrap up with a couple of things on how to start. If you've written notes, take one or two things that you think can, you can action tomorrow that you can definitely do. Like you're a nine out of 10, you can start nailing those things with consistency. Once you've done it for one or two weeks, do you feel like, all right, I've got this, add another layer in. Don't be tempted to do all or nothing because you will do nothing. You'll do all for a couple of days, then you'll do nothing. The analogy I like to use is think of throwing one ball, catching one ball, rather than throwing three, catching none. So that's where you need to start. Um, don't beat yourself up for not nailing it 100%. Consistency is measured over months, years, not minutes, days, and weeks, okay? So start small, build. If you need a hand with this, you should have my details. You can definitely get hold of me. I'll put them in the comments below. And if you've listened to this, I really appreciate it because you've taken 29 plus minutes out of your day to listen to me talk about things and uh, hopefully you've got some value out of it. So that's it, take care. Have a good week. Make sure you take your rest breaks. Make sure you balance your work and rest and let me know if you need any help.